Hey, what is going on, guys? This is the Bogey Free Podcast for the Career Builder PGA Tournament. This is your host, Evan Chaney. Today, joined by Matt Jones and DFS Jimmy. What do you, how are you guys doing today, guys? What's up, man? I'm doing good. How are you tonight? Fantastic. I just realized I did a really awkward intro, so, you know, play yeah. off that. <laughs> you know, it happens. We, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's freezing still up here in New oh, York. Yeah. So that's always nice. Um, I'm pretty sure. I think the playoff from Sunday just ended right now. I, absolutely. Um, I don't know what the hell happened. All this, six, uh, six this strike, this the camera strike, all this other shit. Like it's just uh, as yeah. if Golf Channel wasn't bad enough in the first place. Oh, that no, that I, coverage on Sunday was terrible. I wasn't in a position to watch a lot Sunday. I was out at like a barbecue situation. Um, I, I guess how bad was it? Oh my god, it was like a it high was school like, AV. Really, really bad. Yeah, it was brutal. I mean, it they were ta- they were trying to track shots from a blimp. Like it was just, whew, it was just bad. It was I didn't uh, see the ball. Like there yeah. was just. So it was like watching no, in the nineties. It was like pretty much. You pretty much, I would say, seventy-five to eighty percent of what you saw was just guys on the green. So, or nineties, yeah, okay. Or like from the green, looking down the fairway, hoping to see the ball on the way in. <laughs> that was pretty much it. Oh, it was awful. So, there's that. Um, I mean, the I fact mean, that you're able, the fact that you're able to barbecue in January. I mean, let's. Oh yeah, I live in Florida. Listen, listen hey, yeah. listen to change the tone uh, and everything. It's not so so somber with the cold weather and and the <laughs> bad camera work. Um, I got to play my first uh, first round of golf in uh, like a year and a half uh, after some shoulder surgery and rehab and stuff, and shot an 80, 81. So I'm pretty fired up about that. Nice. So um, I got good. I got I got good vibes going into uh, into this week. Yeah, and let's. I mean, let's just jump into this tournament here. I'll go to you first, Matt. What? So, what are you looking at with this course? What stats are you evaluating? How are you judging your golfers for this week? Yeah, I mean, this is a uh, a bit of a clusterfuck. I mean, we have three courses. Um, each guy will play Stadium Course, Nicholas Tournament Course, and La Quinta um, once Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then they'll go over to the Stadium Course for the final round on Sunday. Um, yeah, I mean it's kind of a it's kind of a pain in the ass to be totally honest with you. They're uh, they're similarly set up courses, I would say, um, but there's definitely uh, definitely a couple of differences. Jimmy, you tweeted out uh, some great stats earlier today or yesterday or I don't know. You were both super days. early, super both early. Both days, yeah. I think Saturday I tweeted out like the really in depth course stuff, and then I like distilled down some yardage uh, scoring by yardages and stuff. Uh, today that uh, yeah if you're if you're watching and you haven't seen it check out uh, check out my twitter profile uh or my article on dfsreport.com uh they both have links to it but yeah this um so for i guess first of all to backtrack a little bit we're at the career builder um and it's in la quinta california and it does cover three courses so uh what i did is i broke down sort of like where where all the DraftKings points are scored based on the percentages of birdies and eagles and bogeys and whatnot uh, that occur uh, over the last uh, several years on each course. And the guys are going to play 10 par fours that are under 400 yards, 15 par fours that are between 400 and 450 yards, and five par fours that are over 450 yards. Then they're going to play eight par fives that are between 500 and 550, so pretty short, and then five, uh, four par fives that are over 550. Uh, those are where all the points are going to be sc- scored. Uh, like 50% of the points are scored on your par fours this week um, with almost an equal distribution coming between the two short and mid range par four categories. And then 30% of your points basically come from the eight short par fives. So I think it's, I mean, the only thing we know is that's where scoring occurs. And since it's a kind of a highly varied field, I mean, there's an additional 20 people in the field or 15 people in the field because it's a 54 hole cut. So it, there's just a whole lot of variants. This is a first-time winners sort of event. Uh, I've had it penciled in. I think everybody kind of does that. Uh, this is in your one and dones. This is the week to pick a first-time winner. Uh, this course and this event seem to just kind of breed it because of 
the big field and it, they're basically playing muni golf here for for like a pga level competition these are three of the weakest courses in terms of difficulty on the tour um so i think uh, i think i'm just targeting those key distances and my models on fantasy national this week and i'm just targeting um you know your your wedge game guys and your hot putters i don't necessarily since it's overseeded bermuda i'm not too concerned about the bermuda splits because it plays a little more you know plays a little bit different uh but i just want guys that have had a good putter lately so um good approach games and um and and a decent putter i think are all you kind of need this week um if you do get off of the fairway the rough uh because it's overseeded it's kind of gnarly so it can lead to uh some some missed approaches um, I, I wrote in my article this week that, um, what is it, uh, like if you miss the fairway, it's uh, like a .26 uh, stroke um, penalty. So like if you miss four fairways over the course of, you know, your, if you miss, if you hit 10 of your 14 fairways this week, which is 71%, you're going to end up being, um, you're still going to end up losing like a stroke over the course of, um, of the week. So I think we see a lot of guys club down this week. I don't think distance really plays a huge factor um i think for guys like rom it, it like doesn't matter but some of the other distance guys i don't think they they have the advantage that they might have had you know last two weeks yeah and uh going back to what you were saying about like first time winners and stuff um it, there's a there's a real correlation at this event between guys who have at least played one of the hawaii events and doing well here um it's so sort what's of like that, last what's that list look like but that's an interesting list. First time winner yeah, and true. played Hawaii. You just got to find the uh, the middle of that Venn diagram, and we're just printing money this week. So that's it's perfect. What that's what I'm going to do. Well, uh, all right. Well, let's let's dive into our golfers here. Well, real quick before we uh before we hit uh before we hit the uh, 10K guys, we actually have a sponsor tonight. Uh, it's nice. one eight hundred flowers for crying out loud. We got oh, uh, yeah. oh nice. We got the we got Valentine's Day coming up and stuff, right? It is right around the corner. We got oh. we got fifteen percent off site wide if you use bogey free, all one word. Um, and it's not just flowers, man. I mean, we got uh, we got simply chocolate. We got stockyards. You could send uh, send your man some meat. It's just it's perfect. You just you just got to throw in, you just got to throw in bogey free. For fifteen percent off, like what could be better? It's interesting. I do think that um, you know this is a great way for a community of guys that you know most of us are, are you know single, uh, you know bearded gentlemen. Uh, so if you uh, if you do have are lucky enough to have one of those ladies in this community, it's an easy way for you not to have to leave your computer, right? Exactly. There you go. Get it all done in one place. You hit the keep, gr keep grinding DFS and send the flowers at the same time. Perfect. There you go. <clears throat> Perfect combination. Yeah, what could be better, right? <laughs> All right. So yeah, let's let's jump into our our ten k and up guys, and up here at the top at eleven thousand eight hundred, John Rom. How can you go wrong with him this week? It exactly, which I think will be the sentiment of like most people, and as it probably should be, but I don't know. It's. Like he seems like he's the best by such a large margin that I, you know, it, it, I'm yeah. not really. It's like I, I guess you just kind of go 100. percent I mean, you're either going 100 percent or zero percent. Like you're I, taking it, a, you're taking a yeah. bold stand here, but you know. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. It's just I, like even if he doesn't win, is he not gonna score 100 points on this? Like, oh no, he's goat he's track. Gonna, oh no, he's gonna crush. He's gonna crush. It's just yeah. you know, I don't know if something crazy ha like the one percent chance something crazy happens. Who knows? Yeah, I mean he uh, what was he thirty fourth here last year, and he if you look back, the way that he played these par fives like this was obviously before his like real real coming out party right. This what was it the following week he won the farmers yeah. right. Yeah, and that's no. just like a, this is the warm up for him for this for this next week, which is such a big deal. Right, and he he did nothing on the par fives and came in thirty fourth last year, like literally nothing. I think he might have even been over par. He had like a double and a couple bogeys on the par fives last year. Like that's not going to happen again. 
I'm not scared off at all by 11, eight, especially with like who else is up here around him. It's like, come on, uh, I'll play John Ron. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. I just, I guess I just don't see the scenario that it doesn't work, which probably means there's a case to be made for it not working. Right. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I guess, I guess Uh, what's, I guess what's that case and what's that percentage chance? Because I think even, even, you know, John Rom, like if, if he's projected for what's it, what's he going to be 35% owned by the time it's all said and done mm. 40% maybe like that. It's got to be somewhere in that. Yeah, it's it, just insane range. It's definitely interesting um, to I sort think, of try and figure that out. Cause you don't, I mean, most weeks you don't see the top price guy get that high. Right. But I think that, I think it's definitely possible, but I think it's also one of these times where like, maybe it's, maybe it comes in a little bit lower than we think because it's so expensive and it ends up being like an even better play. But I'm also like, maybe people think that and then it'll be higher. So you never know. Whatever. I'm just going to play John Rahm and know that (laughs) it's like good process, right? Play John Rahm at a scoring fest. Like you said, he did nothing on the par fives. And he came in 34th. So if he does anything on the par fives, he's going to absolutely slaughter. So, I mean, what better way to get warmed up for next week than winning this week? Like, he's just so clearly the best golfer in the field. So I'm going to play John Rahm, and I'm not going to, like, lose sleep. I'll have a tiny bit of – I'll have, like, one lineup with Harmon and Reed, and and that'll just have to be yeah, enough. Like, okay, so, yeah, Brian yeah, Brian Harmon was obviously going to be the next guy to talk about, like, He has two tournaments in a row, right? He comes in third at the TOC, fourth at the Sony. Is he not going to gain that recency bias crowd? Yeah, but no one's paying. Like, are you really going to, like, not pay $300 more for John Rahm? Brian Harmon is, he's like a, he's like, the guy's tiny, man. Oh, he is. No, he's, (laughs) he's he's very small. No, that's, no one's arguing. I'm just, like, really my point is. Like, but are people yeah. really gonna click on Brian Harmon despite his good play instead of John Rom? You you'd be surprised. Like, I mean, there's gotta be. I mean, there's gonna be a group of people that are playing no, DFS golf for the first time this season. They look at the game logs. They say, "Oh, John Rom hasn't. You know, he hasn't played recently. Oh, look at Brian Harmon. He's you know he's got what fourth and third in his last two tournaments. You know, he's probably gonna be overowned for that reason." I I I hope he goes under owned because I can see like I can make a case for Brian Harmon, but I I like Patrick Reed's won this thing before I think, yep. um, Kisner, like Kisner theoretically his game sets up well and he's going to be probably the lowest owned to the bunch. Phil, this place has been good to Phil. Same thing for him. It's like a warm up game for next week, um, but he scores so many points and if he clubs down with his driver. I mean, Phil's getting older, you know, the older the guys get, the more their game goes, you know, kind of right down the middle. Maybe um, maybe Phil doesn't uh, do as much crazy Phil stuff and he just scores more. He does have good Bermuda putting splits. Um, so I think Phil probably comes in second highest own behind Rom in this category. Do you think that's warranted, though? Like, is that... I don't know. That doesn't seem. Yeah, but he could finish like thirty fifth with like six eagles. Yeah, I guess. Or you know, like twenty three birdies or something. <laughs> oh. True. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I just I'm uh, I'm very curious to see how the week shakes out. Again, obviously, just mentioning it's Monday night, so we don't know exactly where everybody's going. You know, Fanshare has like six or seven tags on on some of these guys, but that's about it. So we don't really know where ownership's going to go. I, I think that if you're playing tournaments, you can probably talk yourself into a, f- I mean, I, I could see fading Rom in a tournament if his ownership is really going to get to like 35%. Yeah. But is, I mean, like what are the odds that he walks away with this thing at like, like DJ did with a throat stomping eight shot victory type of situation? Yeah, I I mean I don't think <laughs> like what are the odds that, like what are the odds that is if you don't have Rom you don't win? Well, I I'm just what I'm just, that's kind of the decision you have to make. Yeah, but I mean a a big field like this, I think there's a case to be made that you might you can definitely make money this week without having the winner, no? 
I don't know. I, think, I mean, depends on the tournament. I probably I, because I guys it, are going to go really yeah. low, right? Yeah. So you know, you hit one of these guys we're talking about it maybe being like a first time winner or whatever. A few guys that sort of creep up out of nowhere, and you know, you're talking about you get two guys in the top five or three guys in the top ten, and you're at least looking at a pretty decent, you know. A, a decent cash and then on top of that if rom is even like i don't know what if he plays like he did last year what if he just what if these courses just don't fit his eye and he ends up in 30th what, again? what if he plays like speed the last two weeks <laughs> as the top uh, guy in awful. the tournament just awful. so uh, but, no yeah, i but, you know that's kind of what you're banking on you know i mean there's a right. case for that so yeah i mean i don't, yeah. I, don't I can't disagree with you Right, I'm, think, and I'm not saying that I'm going to be able to do that because anybody who's ever heard me talk about golf, like John Rahm is one of the first probably three people that I talk about when I talk about golf. So like I, I'm for sure in on Rahm. I'm just saying from like a game theory perspective, if you really think he's going to push 35% as the most expensive golfer in the field, I think there's reason to to consider a fade of him. Well, not a total fate, but you know, not being like, not being a hundred percent on him. Um, We've, I'm not going to be able to do that. He's going to be a hundred percent of my lineups, but that's my curse with Rom. So yeah, <laughs> we we've beat Rom to death. We all know. I mean, like, it's just, you should play him. You should have exposure. It's John Rom. Perfect guy's good. Guy's Hashtag good, good at golf. Yeah, really. All right. Um. So I think we've I think we've talked about our 10k and up guys. Uh, so we'll we'll jump down to our 9k guys, and I mean Duff Daddy. Do we love any Duff Daddy at 9800 this week? I liked him at like 7600 a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude's dude's been playing a little bit out of his mind a bit, right? I mean 11th at the TOC, 18th at the Sony. Is any of that production sustainable? Probably not. I mean, maybe, maybe not. I guess, I guess it's just he's not a sexy golfer to me. Like, I don't like playing Jason Duffner. I especially don't like $9,800 Jason Duffner. Oh, yeah, no, he's played, like, he's played well here before. He's got course history. He's playing well currently. He had a hot putter two weeks ago. He's got normally a good steady game that fits a course like this, and he's going to be probably lower owned in this tier and makes a good pivot off a of web so sure i can see playing him will i play him eh, i don't know again i just like i don't know jason duffner is just not a like i don't i don't like playing him but i can absolutely see why uh, i'm not playing zach johnson this week um pat and kazire maybe but i don't think he's gonna do it again um, yeah how much of a how much of a bump do you think he gets for winning this past week i don't know like probably not wise. much i doubt much like I think people know when to get off, and I just like he's won twice in like a very short period of time. I can't see him. I just can't see him winning a third time in this time span after having spent so long not winning. He's talking um, FedEx Cup, though. You see that? Uh, you see that interview? I didn't, but I mean, good for him. I mean, it's not like he's not <laughs> capable of it. I'm just banking on that golfers win like 80% of their money and 20% of their tournaments. And he's like won most of it. He's won more money than he's ever won. Right. So at some point, you know what I mean? Like Adam Hadwin came back down to earth after several really, really hot weeks. I'm just wondering when Patton Kazire's like Cinderella moment is. Um, so that's this kind, is kind of, of a gross point. range, right? Like it is like, I don't want, like, are you playing, are you playing like a 20 plus percent owned web probably this week? Like no. that's not that's not a good not a, like idea to me. No, not at almost ten k. If you want to get, you know, the guys like Rom up there. Yeah, I just exactly like so. I think like maybe there's a case to be made to stack this range, but I don't like most of it. I think I'm going to take somebody from the top and skip this range, as probably most people will. Yeah, yeah. like I think I think Kenny talks about it a little bit on uh, on fantasy golf degenerates, but and I'm kind of of the same mindset. Like most weeks, I like to sort of drop down to this range for cash and get like a few of these guys. But this week it's not, yeah, it, it is not as appealing no as history. it usually is. There's no really great history except for Webb and Duffner. And theirs is like sketchy at best and Phil's like, right. Yeah, I agree. I'm just, 
it's, it's hard for me to get there. Yeah, I'm uh, yeah, I'm gonna probably be avoiding this range. Fit in the guys up at the top that I like, and then uh, drop down quite a bit because there's definitely, like you said, there's there's crazy variance in this uh, in this event. So you can definitely take some shots uh, as we get a little cheaper. For sure. All right, so we'll jump out of that 9K range because it doesn't seem like we like anyone there particularly. So yeah, we'll drop to our 8K range where we have our Brandon Steeles, Chez Reeves, and Austin Cooks of the world. Oh, and Bill Haas. Is this? I saw something on Twitter. Is this actually going to be Bill Haas Chalk Week? Um, if it is, I don't want to play Bill Haas, but I don't think it is because he's missed his last two cut events. Yeah. I don't. It's, his I course history is elite, sure, but I just I don't think people are like ready to jump on a par making machine. Um, no, but what you said, Miss two you just said. elite field events. Yeah, but I mean, what you just said. I mean, if his course history is good here, people latch on to that. They do, but I don't know if he's going to be like super chalky. But he'll he'll get ownership for sure. But I don't think he'll be like the highest owned in this range. Bud Colley's going to get more ownership. Ches Reeve, Brandon Steele. They'll be higher owned, I think. Yeah, and I think Steel. I, I don't probably know. Probably rightfully so. Like probably Steel and Review probably rightfully should be higher owned than Bill, given like that they have a little bit of form and Bill's got no form. Um, they both have some course history as well. Like Steel's probably an overall objectively better play. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I just still burnt me so bad at the uh, at the tournament of champions. I don't know if I can. Uh, I don't know if I can jump back on that. I'm still. Uh, I think he's still in the penalty box for me. Full disclosure: I wrote up Haas as like a really high risk, high reward play. Like if this game shows up, it's going to show up here. But if it doesn't, like he's going to miss the cut and like suck ass. It's like Jimmy Walker last week to me. This is Bill yeah. Haas only it's at 8600 instead of 7200. Yeah, the the price is. Uh, even if he was 79, I'd feel a little bit better about it. Just seeing like, you know, mid yeah, 8K is a little much. He'd be super chalked down there for sure. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have, uh, we got my boy down here though, too, that we have to, uh, that we talk about. Who, Bud Collie or Peter Uline? Freaking Uline, man. Like, what the hell? I, I'm oh, yeah, such I a that. fucking sucker for him. I don't understand why. I cannot stop playing this guy. How it tilting will it be when you don't me. play him this week and he happens to like crush? Oh, for sure. Of course. Of course. <laughs> it's gonna, of course. There's no way. There is no way that he's not going to top five the first time I don't play him this year. There's no possible way. That's just how it. So, so are you going to play him or are you going to play Knox or Collie? I would or lean. Kirk. I would lean Collie over Knox for sure. Um, yeah, okay. I can no. see why you would do that, but Knox, he boy, he's just, I just good. I mean, if he can get over some of the putting issues he's had, like last, like Sunday, if you're, you know, if you watched anything yeah. on Sunday, like he was bad with the putter. Well, yeah, I mean, it's Russell so, Knox. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if he can get over some of the putting issues, which he probably won't, but yeah, I mean, Luke List would have like six wins now if he could get over his putting issues. Like, I, I, I get your point, but. <laughs> I mean, Knox is probably the better player. He's been he's a he's a proven winner. Collie hasn't. I think all Collie's won is uh, Web dot com tour. Um, some some I forget. I looked it up the other day. But uh, anyway, so Collie is going to be chalkier, and he probably he fits that like first time winner narrative, and people want to see Collie win. I think so. He'll be the chalky fan favorite. Um, but I, I like both of them. But are you play? Are we buying Kirk? Um, that his hot run continues, even though he only has like a little bit of course history. I wouldn't. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, but... I'm not like, I'm not huge on him, honestly. I mean, I've, I don't know. He's never really like flashed that much for me. I mean, I guess he had a good, a, a good couple of finishes his last couple times out, but I don't know. I'm not. I, there's no way I'm clicking on him over Uline just because I'm such a fucking fish that I can't like stop myself from doing it. So I don't know. It, it, and it's interesting that we just talked about everybody in this range, but the guy who was in the playoff yesterday. Who, huh? Right? 
right? Yeah, it's yeah, it's James Han was the only like, guy. Who, yeah, he. You know, I'm. I'm. Whatever. I'm just gonna miss whenever Han shows up and wins a golf tournament because it happens, you know, once a year. And well, he's got to win the Genesis, right? Like that's well, it. That's gonna be the thing. Maybe, but I'm just. I'm not gonna be trying to be predict predicting James Han. Um, so I just like ignore him. If he wins, that's fine. I'll just not be on it. Yeah, no, I don't think he. I don't think he's gonna win. I, I'm just. I just think he's, he's that guy that shows up for a week and then goes away for like nine, ten, eight, you know, fifteen, twenty weeks, and like I'm just not gonna fall into that trap of trying to chase the one week. So I, he doesn't exist to me. Yeah, no, I just, I just found it interesting. We literally named everybody in the eight K range except for the guy who came in second last week. It was just interesting because to me. Yeah, I used to do the tricks of James Hahn. That's why. <laughs> We're all we all know what's going on. Dude is a troll. I'll give you that. Yeah. So what about, I, I uh, think... what about Bubba CH three Spawn? He's your he, like he's going to be a, like everyone's going to be talking up Spawn by the end of this week. I mean, I I never have any strong JJ Spawn takes, but I think he's all right. Oh, he's winning. I think he's all he's right. Winning cause... soon. Oh man, I don't know That's if it's here, but he's winning. Uh, I don't. I don't know if it's a hot take, man. He's been he's been pumping out some serious scores, and he was close last year. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know if it's this week. Know, like, that dude's gonna I'm win a golf tournament. It. Um, do we believe Bubba's back after being skinny? Uh, <laughs> after being skinny, <laughs> he's well. He's still skinny. Oh, just like after the skinny transformation, he did a no sugar thing, and now he's uh, now he's like uh, he's back. Like, yeah, like what is best? And he also got rid of the. The, the ball so no pink ball no uh no sugar diet comfy ready to go is bubba gonna like show back up for eight thousand dollars the whole like getting rid yeah. of the getting rid of the the ball thing is has gotten me completely off of him okay. like i'm i'm fully on board with the mini golf balls so i'm just i'm a little upset mostly disappointed in bubba but um, but really, you're you're like you're mad that he got rid of the pink ball, and you're like not gonna oh, play him because you think it, because you. How much that? of a narrative can a how much of a narrative can a ball be like, dude? How no, no, just me personally? Ball, like, oh, okay. Like me personally, I I play like the neon mojo balls when I golf. So like that made Bubba almost likable for me, even though I don't like him at all. And now it's like, come on, <laughs> I got like, you. Okay, I okay. mean. Is there why are why are we thinking that he's back? Can you sell me on him? Because I don't. No, I was just you know listen. I mean, guys like that don't stay down forever. You go down for a year, peaks and valleys, careers, things like that. I just you know, if he's down at some point, he's got to kind of come back up a little bit. If he's like comfortable after losing like forty pounds and no sugar and like travels with avocado toast and stuff, then you know maybe he's got it you know dialed in. So I just maybe Bubba's back. That's all. Um, I'm not going to yeah. play him. I just kind of wanted to get your thoughts. If you guys were super high on him, you might talk me into some, but oh, I guess no, not. <laughs> I think we can all agree here that Bubba is just, no. Yeah, no, I would. Uh, I am playing J.J. Spawn. I like J.J. Spawn this week. I'm going to be high on him. He's chalky. He's Him and Bud Colley are probably the two like pieces of heavy chalk I'm going to eat down in this range. And I might, I'm going to avoid the Webb Simpson chalk uh, at the top. And yeah, probably I feel like Chaz me Revy chalk. I feel like me and Evan established ourselves like pretty firmly against Bubba last year, right? Like I think that's oh, fair to say. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there was ever a time we were favorable at Bubba at all. I mean, it was an easy year to do that, obviously, <laughs> but it, like yeah. just in general, we were I, we were never I, over the over the moon about Bubba last year. Yeah, like he has to do something to convince us. Yeah, and I'm that over it. just hasn't occurred yet. No, you're right. It it, it has not. Uh, I am. Uh... I am probably not playing him either, but I am going to play some David Lingmurth. That's not uh, a bad. No, that's not. Two bad. Two, two time runner up here, yeah. flashed an eighth, I think, as uh, was an eighth at the RSM, mm -hmm. something like that. I think it was an eighth. I'm trying to like double check it now. Seventeenth. I'm sorry, a seventeenth. Um, so, yeah, I think David's got a little form to come into a course that he likes. I mean, you can't come, you can't go runner up twice at a tournament. I mean, maybe third time's a charm. For the tiny sweet, for the tiny Swedish man, you're just I'm you're on, all I'm, about like hashtag I'm, small guys. Yeah, dude, I'm on team hashtag midget, hashtag <laughs> hashtag team midget golf. 
I think that's problematic. I don't know. I don't know if that's what we uh, what we call them anymore. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It's uh. It's but it's a thing, I guess. Is, are there any other tiny golfers in the field? Uh, Brian Stewart's a tiny golfer. I don't really oh, like man. him. This are week, you gonna build a whole line of just Adam, guys? Adam Hadwin. He's tiny. Oh, yeah. He's tiny. Danny Lee. Needed. Danny Lee. That guy's a that guy's borderline. He's a New Zealand midget, down under midget. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. One hundred flowers is loving all our midgets right now. Listen, midgets need flowers too. There is no. Yeah, listen, everyone. Everyone. I'm not everyone of all backgrounds. I'm yeah, not discriminating. I'm in fact. Flowers. I'm in fact bringing attention. Brian Gay. That dude's a midget. He's a midget. He's a midget with white hair though. He's got. He's so got. The, many. He's got the frosted tips. Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on from team midget. <laughs> No, I'm I just looking it. at the 7K range of guys. I just find so much value. Um, I mean, working down from like Ling Murth, and you have Hudson Swafford who uh, won this thing last year. I don't know how you guys feel about him. Uh, yeah, I mean, I played a lot of them last week. I, I, yeah. I generally don't like guys to repeat, but Hudson's in good form and he should play well. Um, yeah. You know, top 15. Kind of. I mean, 7,800 is like borderline value um i don't know how you guys feel about snedeker and chapel i i think in this range there's a lot to like and not a lot to love like that's how i'm feeling sort yeah. of scrolling well, you through know, this range like there's there's a lot that yeah. deserves sprinkles for sure but i mean i don't know unless i'm like totally whiffing on something there's there's really nobody like 7500 and up that i want to be like way overweight on oh see that's that's where you're wrong what did i miss grayson murray oh it's fucking grayson well no 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 you get you get him <laughs> he's now he's definitely in the brand this week but you know who we're looking at you gotta know love daddy lucas glover oh shit i didn't oh, even yeah, no. oh there you go. yeah 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 you can play Time lucas that. glover until the fucking cows come home i love that, it that's evan's brand he, yeah, it's, I, no, I was no. looking. I was looking at his. I was looking at Fantasy National of what he did last year. Here, he played like absolute dog shit. I mean, yeah, because he he's lost, Lucas Glover. Yeah, if yeah. you want a mediocre <laughs> finish, play Lucas Glover. <laughs> no, Lucas Glover is like the expensive version of Hudson Swafford or the cheaper <laughs> version of Hudson Swafford this week. <laughs> See, here's the thing, though. Like, I'll play a hot so much... armor that's ready to win again. No, here's the thing with Glover though. It's like Glover has the perfect like he might be a he might not give you like the greatest finishes of all time. But he's always the greatest DraftKings <laughs> marker. What a fucking understatement. Lucas no. Glover might not give you the best finishes of all time. Sounds like a mediocre porn star. <laughs> <laughs> he could pass as one. I wouldn't I wouldn't put him oh, past. Jesus. Him. But but no, like he'll give you some really solid DraftKings performances. Okay, so T to Green, like, fine, yeah. but I don't like the guy is a, if I don't roster guys that shank six inch putts to, for a fifty nine. It's just kind of that simple for me. You're, you're missing out on you're missing out Jimmy, on love daddy. We we had like a, a uh, like if it was a, a yeah. major or a low scoring tournament. I could maybe see it if he was super cheap. We had an on ongoing like prop bet him versus Tway last year, and I think. I'm pretty sure that I came out on top last no, year. No, you, you beat that. me like I think we did it like five times to beat me four. <laughs> Some ridiculous like that. I, I get the Glover. I just Glover has limited upside to me, and that's sort of the reason I never play him. But if he's a cheap cash play, I get it because he's probably he's not gonna miss too many cuts. Uh but I, I like Ryan Armour a lot again this week. He ranks number one in my model. He is number one in the last twenty four rounds of strokes gained approach. Uh all he has to do is get a hot putter, and he can take down this event for his, you know, second win. We just saw Hudson Swafford win twice in a short period of time. Maybe Ryan Armour, you know, kind of shows up this week and does the same thing. Uh, the the event that he won at Sanderson Farms, it's another birdie fest, very much like this. You know, just kind of easy drivers, irons off the tee, good wedges, and just a hot putter, and that's sort of what you need here. You need to find the fairway. You need to have a good wedge or a short iron in. You just need to make some putts. Um, so. I really like Ryan Armour. He's going to be kind of chalky, but um, and then I like the guy. I like uh, CT Pan right below him for like a really small share tournament flyer, um, just because he's kind of my guy. No other real reason. I think he scores well I mean, sometimes, but you're 
You're yeah. missing you're missing the goat play at 7300 right now, Jimmy. Johnson Wagner, his mustache is back. Oh no, no. he's 7400. Uh Come on. 73 oh, sink. There you go. Oh yeah. Par 4 right. score. He fits. I he fits the course. I will not stop playing this guy at like just especially cash wise. Like maybe he can't score in in bunches and keep all the way up with everybody, but like this dude just makes cuts constantly. Like, I don't know. I I am having a hard time getting away from him. I feel like he's uh like a poor man's coocher from last year. Like just just keep making those cuts. Like just keep doing it. Seventy three hundred, costing you nothing. Might as well just keep uh, keep going back to him. And actually, in the last twenty four rounds, he's ninth in DraftKings points. So, not too shabby for my boy Stewart. I mean, no, I mean last year. A resurgent... Go ahead. No, oh, just he, in general, he's having a resurgent year. So I, I like Stewart. You know, in general. I mean, last year here he missed the cut, but he put up a he put up some pretty solid. I mean, he was except for strokes gained approach, he gained strokes everywhere else yeah and you could throw out last year too because his wife was dealing with breast cancer so yeah. i mean everything so, I mean, he has is kind of an asterisk next to it so i wasn't thinking about that but yeah he's still even with that he played a, he played a solid round or a solid two rounds scott piercy's interesting at 7400 uh and martin laird those are my other two targets in this range um scott piercy small shares gpp martin laird cash consideration um party and, party probably have a decent amount in tournaments as well he likes the west coast um i like some other plays but they're further down that's kind of it for this like low to mid seven thousands for me maybe uh sejka sejka i think he got his tournament card here he, he played q school here uh and at like six percent owned this is the kind of guy that like he's shown up at like big fields before so i mean he could absolutely show up here so i could maybe see like a tournament sprinkle of him yeah, I'll I'll throw in uh I'll throw in Garrigus into a lineup too. Oh, down there at seventy two, sure. Yeah, I, I like that price for him. He's uh last twenty four oh. rounds, second in strokes gained approach and fifth in T to green. I'll take it. What about John Peterson and Tom Hoagie? Like Hoagie was right there towards the end. I don't know what his course history is. Course history is not very good, but like Peterson's interesting to me, you know, because he like he ended up in a bathtub with the missile scare. And the whole thing. Um, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> well, you, heard, you heard about the missile scare in Hawaii, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, they he were in, in Hawaii bathtub? playing golf, right? So when he got the notification, he, like, got into his bathtub in his hotel suite with his newborn baby and his wife and their in-laws and, like, put a mattress over their heads. And he was, like, it seemed like he was genuinely freaked out, you yeah. know, and that like, he was at the top of the leaderboard. And then he was not after that incident. So, I mean, it's possible he kind of comes back here and regroups. And this is, I could see him showing up at an event like this again, first time winner type of thing, really talented guy that might've been on his way to winning last week, if not for somebody pushing the wrong button. How the fuck is that just like a wrong button push too? like, apparently it was like out. a drop down menu, uh, situation. And, um, yeah, I guess it was like a, I don't know. It takes me 10 minutes to put up this fucking stream on YouTube and they send out <laughs> that a missile's coming to hit Hawaii in like three seconds. Like, that's not okay. And then it well, took 38 minutes to like figure it out, which is maybe the more disturbing part because right. I think it takes like 28 minutes to tr for a missile to come from where it would have been coming from. So anyway, enough of our national, national security talk. Get your national security information on bogey free DFS. <laughs> Actually, as you guys <laughs> God. As you guys were saying that, I got a pop up on my screen. It says stay safe in 2018 with Phoenix 360. What 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 is that? A missile defense system? I don't know, but I, I think it's learning. Oh. It's learning. I think machine Brilliant. learning is is coming to fruition. Oh yeah, Skynet man. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, we got like moving down. The other two guys I like before we get out of the seven thousand dollar range, I guess, is um there's three because I just saw one at 7,000. But Ryan Palmer, um, I think he's a cash play. Great course history here. He had another, like, last year was sort of an off year for him. He was dealing with some off-course stuff, I think. 
I can't remember exactly what it was, but I do remember reading quite a bit about it uh, last year that he, he was just kind of missing time and things just weren't quite right. So maybe as a resurgent year, we saw a flash of him last week. Uh, so uh, I could see Ryan Palmer kind of, uh, you know, that was uh, the calm before the storm and uh, he could uh, he could show up. But of course, he's done really, really well at over the years. Um, so him and then uh, Tom Hoagie right there towards the end. Interesting to me. And then uh, not too much, but Scott Stallings has actually played really well here over the past. And he's one of those golfers that just kind of like shows up out of nowhere. I could see him showing up for like a top 15 finish this week. Yeah. Stallings, I feel like is always a little sneaky. Like I, yeah, yeah. I've accident. I feel like I've accidentally played him sometimes and it's worked <laughs> out. You know what I mean? Like that's exactly one of those... the kind of guy he is though. That's yep. exactly what he is. It's like, Oh, I didn't know I had 15, you know, 15% or 5% shares of him. And then you end up winning the GPP. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, he's uh he's definitely uh definitely interesting. I th- I'm trying to think of what tournament it was last year that I played him completely. I think it might have been the John Deere. Did he do well at the John Deere? Something like that. And Probably. I was just like, oh cool. He like got a top ten. Great. <laughs> Didn't know I clicked on him, but awesome. <laughs> um what I mean, that's kind of it in the seven K range, right? I, I'm not I'm gonna have yeah. my my one lineup with Song Moon Bay again just because I need to be I need to be there when it happens. Like, just bet him 50 just cents outright or something. Yeah, I guess. What like, are the odds on that? Don't, don't let him ruin a good DraftKings team, right? Just bet him because if he shows up, he's going to like win. Like That's kind of what you're we wor- expect. <laughs> you're working under the assumption that I ever have good DraftKings lineups. That's the problem. Yeah, but see, like, that's the thing. Like, like if you look at the guys no, that like, are always so consistent in GPPs, is they just they don't make that like that play. If they don't yeah. make the one play that seems like it always seems like every week we have that one guy that like cripples your GPP lineup from being like min cash or just kind of right there to like being up in the top, you know, 1%. Yeah. yeah. Real quick, because I needed to pick your brain on this and I forgot to uh, text you. Um, what just real, really quickly, not getting too deep into it, but I was thinking about it. Do you prefer when you make like multiple lineups, like, uh, like you enter the 20 max? Do you go totally random or correlate like pretty uh, pretty closely? When you say correlate, correlate to what? What do you mean? Meaning like you have a core of like three guys oh, okay. that go throughout the whole lineup or like how do you – what what do you usually do? I usually Just have – it, it depends. I mean it depends on my confidence level because I, I'm not one of these, you know, hot, I don't have like tons of volume that I play uh, and I don't play the really, really high dollar, um, you know, like smaller field tournaments. So um, – when I play a 20 max, I do kind of like try and hit a core. Um, and I try to like, I usually take a really aggressive stance to ownership as well to in that core. Uh, so like Brian Harmon two weeks ago when, you know, everyone just overlooked him and he finished third. So not last week. Cause you know, it feels like he finishes third every week now. Uh, but the week before last, I took a really aggressive stance in like all my ownership. So I think I made like 20 lineups total and I probably had 60% Brian Harmon. So just took a really aggressive stance on like him and like two other people, and then I just built around it. But I build most of my lines by hand. Right. I tend to just kind of fill in three spots and then kind of go where I want and just kind of have some different lineup constructions around those, you know, two to four people. It usually ends around three is my core. Gotcha. Yeah, I was just curious. I I meant meant to ask you that, and I so. totally forgot. Figure we could throw in some uh, some game theory there. I ran a yeah no. I, I ran a, I ran the uh, the Sang Moon Bay bet for fifty cents would yield you one hundred and twenty five dollars. Yeah, it's a way better bet than a three dollar DraftKings lineup, yeah. right? Yeah. No, I, I just All right, guys, to see I won't do was. it. Jesus. All right, I get it. God. <laughs> I'm just looking out. I'm positive Evie. He's gonna fucking win this week. Watch. <laughs> he does. He does. He regrets that would be, not... the, that would be the ultimate troll. <laughs> God. Oh my god! We, it, talk, it, we talk. We publicly talk you off a play that goes on to top five or top top three to, and win or something. I don't think he talked to us anymore. Oh my god! No, you got you guys are all right by me. Yeah. I, I do have to. Uh, I have to bring up the next uh, brand play that I know Evan's about to talk about. Your boy's in the field. Oh, he is Maverick. He is. I was getting really excited. Maverick nice. McNeely. Let's talk about Maverick McNeely for a second. Now, as John Rahm was floating up the amateur ranks, he always had someone right behind him. You know who that guy was? 
It's Maverick McNeely. Him and Rom in the amateur circuit would just duke it out all the time. And it was pretty much just those two when, you know, when all the when they were competing in tournaments. Maverick McNeely is extremely underrated to the public. I don't know when I don't think like this is his spot to be like, you know, a top five guy. But I remember I played him in the Masters last week in the Millie Maker. He missed the cut just barely, but he still had you know, he had a really good Thursday. <laughs> He had a really good Thursday, a terrible Friday. It was all he played 25% of a golf tournament exceptionally well. Uh, okay. no, I think Maverick McNeely long term is a very talented golfer, like you said. Uh, I agree with you there. I he's one of those guys like Sang Moon Bay, just bet 50 cents on him, you know, every week for the next hundred weeks, and you sh should turn out net profit. He's like he's like, he's like Pat Mayo's strategy for uh Siwoo Kim. If you really believe in him, just bet him every week at a really low dollar and just wait till he wins and you'll be plus EV mm -hmm. or plus plus money. Yeah, McNe McNeely's 220 to one on uh, on my book here right now. Yeah, he actually... Two, yeah, 275 to one on five dimes. I got to yeah, get on he's... five dimes. I'm so fucking sick of my bookie. Yeah, their odds suck. I, uh, I, I purposely have burned money there just to get rid of it so I can just leave the account alone, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, I think I'm just going to put my entire bankroll on, like, the Patriots money line this week and just move on from it. Oh, that's good call. Gonna I'm just going to bet the other side. I'm going to bet the underdog in Jacksonville and just bet it all. If I win, oh, I'll cash it out. Have no – don't do make any right bones now. about this. Bortles is Bortles is going to win in Foxborough. I'm just – I am I need that on the record somewhere. It's absolutely happening this, this week, but – um what what else we got down here this this gets pretty gross pretty quick right like yeah there's there's nothing desirable maybe if you want some hv3 um I, maybe maybe <laughs> if you're that i mean seamus you can get seamus power for 67 i was, I was just gonna say seamus power like yeah. if if anybody was as good like yeah at everything as he is around the green like it would be great, but he, uh, yeah, I don't know. I can't really, I can't really get there with him, man. I don't know. I, I was up 17th in my second model. So, I mean, yeah, I, and I like Seamus power. The story's good, but what about Gooch? Uh, yeah. 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 Hey, I, can see, I can see a, like a dart on him. Ben Silverman shows up in both of my models as number 13th ranked. So maybe he's cursed by the 13th. No, that's my lucky number. So let's go. Yeah, it's, it's my, lucky number is thirteen. It's my lucky number too. How is how is someone's lucky number thirteen? That's... It's it's the lucky number for an entire Japanese culture too. I mean, I mean, think about it. Like, doesn't that you were, just, you were just in Vegas? Here's a Vegas trivia for you. Did you notice a thirteenth floor in your Vegas hotel? I did not. Exactly because they don't have them because everybody thinks they're unlucky except except Caesar's Palace. Because Caesar's Palace is where all the Asians go. And 13 is a lucky number in Asia. They have a 13th floor, and all the Asians stay on the 13th floor. There all the go. rest of the hotels are just triggered little snowflakes that don't yeah. believe in 13. So now we, uh, now, we now our podcast, uh, we can have search, search uh, SEO value for midgets, team midget, and um, Asians like the 13th floor. Perfect. <laughs> Again, 1-800-Flowers is yeah, jumping I was going to say, all wrapped up in those flowers. Right <laughs> Um, yeah, but th that's it, man. I mean, Gooch. I kind of end at Gooch there. What about Sam? What about Sam Saunders, sixty six hundred? Interesting potential. I keep thinking he's going to win on the other coast, but he could do it. Right. Yeah, I I really can't. I think see he's going to win at Bay Hill here. this year. Why not? Right. Yeah. There's one yeah. name at sixty eight hundred that you both keep skipping over, and he played well here last year, and he plays well at what Pat Mayo keeps finding as a corollary course here at Innisbrook in Tampa. Do you know who it is? 6,800. Rip him out. Dominic Bazzelli, the boss. Oh, yeah. Bazzelli did do well here last year. Uh, I, I think uh, I think Bazzelli could break through here. Um, he only struggled in his around the green game last week. And uh, otherwise, he was exceptional uh, approaching the green. And he was uh, and he had a pretty hot putter as well. Uh, and he uh, he lit it up last year. If you guys remember, he went on like Saturday super tear. Um uh, on moving day when they got to the stadium course here last year, I believe. So um, 
I like Bazelli here. If you're all the way down at 6,800, he's probably the only guy that I'm like really considering playing uh, with any conviction. Uh, and then guy, he gained 13 strokes. Yeah. On this. Okay. Yeah. So I think, I think he's a guy that if I'm down here, he's probably the only one that I'm going to play with any kind of conviction. Um, then the, the other guy that I like, and I say I like, I mean, I'll consider him is all the way at the very bottom. Big gravy, Colt Most. I doubt I play him, but like, I could accuracy, see why. Right? I, listen, I mean, I could see why somebody play him. He's gained nine strokes here in the past. Um, so, and he's, you know, he's making a comeback. He had an injury last year or something, uh, but he's had a 10th here and a 24th. Uh, he's, and uh, he's only missed one out of four cuts, made three out of four, and two top 25s, one top 10. And if you like watching a guy stripe it down the middle, 240 every time, Colt Nost is your guy. Yeah, that or you can watch my grandfather play, either one. <laughs> he's pretty tiny too, no? I feel like Who? he's short. Colt Nost? Yeah, Colt Nost is, yeah, he's short, but he's not the definition of tiny. <laughs> yeah, no, they, not yeah, they, tiny they from call, a height perspective. Yeah, they, don't, they don't call tiny people big gravy. <laughs> Unless you're doing it. In, in, in just the worst ironic way possible. Yeah, may, yeah, maybe. No, he's a <laughs> he's a he's a big old he's a big old uh, big old boy. Uh, Colt's yeah. Colt's a pretty funny dude on Twitter. He's a great follow on Twitter. Uh, if yeah, he's you, great. Uh, don't follow him. Uh, and I think generally he's um, he's he's probably uh, he'd probably be a really cool dude to hang out with on tour if I had to guess. Well, good stuff. Um, I guess that does it. Unless you guys have anyone else you want to talk about. No, that's no, it. We, just... We've gotten all the way to the bottom. I think we're good. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I mean, unless unless you have any uh, Jason Gore hot takes, I think we're uh, I think we're all set. <laughs> Who no, has did you guys... Jason Gore hot takes? No, did you guys want to do a yes. one and done? Oh yeah, yeah. And oh, how, Evan, do you have our one and done results? Have we recapped them? Do we know where we're oh, at here? Yeah, let me. I know I'm in last. Let me pull up uh, fantasy golf metrics. Let me see us. Shout out to them, by the way, man. That the the whole interface on there and everything with the one and dones is really great. We'll race to see you can get. Uh... Yeah, I forgot to put dot com on mine. So that's uh, yeah. one of you two will find it. <laughs> I'm not looking. I'm got, trying to I figure out right who here. I'm picking. I got it right. Yeah, you guys figure out who you're picking. So uh, let's see. I've got it right here. So we are at. Uh, third event of the year. So where's the standings? I get the standings. I know I'm in last. All right. So just just standings. Here we go. Uh, I'm in first with 476, 925. Uh, Evans in second, 371, 463, and Matt is in fact in last with 311, 925, and a sad face. We all made the cut last week, though, right? We did. We did all make the cut. Two so... cuts made. Two top 25s for Evan. Uh, I only have one top 25. We all have one top 10. So Yeah, so I'm if I just keep getting guys through the cut, I'll, you know, it's a long season, boys. Let's not uh let's not That's go too crazy here. Yeah, so so far, so far you guys I used Brian Harmon the first week and you guys used Pat Perez it looks like. Yep. This week I used Leishman and uh, somebody used Revy. Uh, I think uh, that would have been Evan yes. used Revy and then you used Kokrak. Yeah, just such a dumb. I'm just a fucking. I'm I'm a fish. I hate everything. <sighs> so that's where we stand after a couple of events in our one and done. So, uh, what do you think, Matt? Who are you gonna pick this week? Oh Jesus! I'm sitting here Not telling, you. telling you that I don't know who, and you go to me first. Great. Okay, well, right. fine. That's fine, Evan. Evan, who do you think? What are you looking at? Um, yeah, this is early, and there's still some research to be done. But I think my one and done might end up being Kevin Na. Really. That is yeah. interesting. Hmm. I, that is a that is a high ups. I, that's an inter- It's going to be low owned, but it could like really pay off. Yeah. Okay, Kevin. No, I wasn't expecting that. What about you, Matt? Are you are you ready yet? Yeah. Um. You know what? Since I'm not going to really own him much, and I think he's going to be chalky in general this week, I think I'm going to go with Bill Haas. So he's just going to show back up and win, huh? Yeah. Okay, I like it. I think uh, I think that's probably a good. I'm good just going choice. for cuts, man. Just keep keep. That's all you need. Guys, chipping that make away the cuts. at these cuts. Come on. 
We're doing it. Okay. I think because I won't use him in any other place. Well, it's actually it's between two people here. Let me see real quick. Yeah, I don't I don't think I'm gonna use him in any other place, so I might use Duffner here. Duff Daddy. Been a little hot. I'm not like like I said, he's not a sexy name. I don't really like to play him, but I'm not I don't I might use Harmon in one of my big leagues that I, I have two teams for the the big one and done for co for um Gupt's corner. So I might use Harmon in one league that I haven't used him in already and probably use Duffner in the other one. I think those guys probably have a decent amount of win equity. Like Duffner was Duffner's been kinda hot, so I'm chasing wins. I'll probably pick those two guys for my two teams this week. There you go. All right. That'll do it for us. This has been the Bogey Free Podcast for the Career Builder. If you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes under Bogey Free. Make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel on YouTube, also Bogey Free, and make sure to follow us all on Twitter. I am at eChaney17. Matt is at Matt Jones TFR. And Jimmy is at DFS Jimmy. And if we are not winning all the money this week, we hope you guys do. So good luck in your contests this week. See you.